Welcome back to Bass Singing Central. Thank you all so much for tuning in for another episode. Today we have Pat Barker of The Guardians. If it's your first time, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications. Pat Barker has had a great career with several different quartets. He's currently with The Guardians, and we got a chance to catch up with him for some bass singing tips. Pat Barker, thank you for being here today, man. Thank you for asking. Hey, we have chatted before on other videos about Southern gospel music, and we've even done a video for this channel on how not to sing bass. We actually did two really That's groundbreaking correct. videos. But people that, didn't get the joke. People <laughs> didn't get the joke. They, uh, they thought I'd be real. Yeah, so, so for those of you watching this, uh, we, I've put one of them on the YouTube channel here uh, just for fun, and I actually put in the title, Pat Barker, How Not to sing bass, and I put it in all caps. We released that video and the other one you were talking about on Facebook first. And we had several people, uh, especially on the first one, um, message myself and you yeah. asking if what you were saying was uh, asking for tips on how to do what it was you were saying yeah. not to do. It's not working. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, one of them was uh, drink a gallon of milk before you go on stage. Yeah, eat a lot of ice cream. Yeah, um, another one. Tie your tie real tight. As tight as you can get it and, and do this yeah. when you're trying to hit. I mean, it was just, if you're, if, if you are one of those guys that's watching right now, I apologize. But it was just, it was hilarious that even though we put on there how not to sing bass, we still had a bunch of guys like, Hey, how do I do this? Oh, yeah. I don't understand. I really want to learn. <laughs> yeah. So today, I want to get one that is actually legit tips from Pat Barker, the bass singer for the <laughs> Guardians. And, uh, man, you've had a great, great journey with bass singing. You've sang with several groups. And uh, what, what did that journey start out like for you? Honestly, it started out with me singing soprano and tenor. I mean, when I first started listening to gospel music, which I was 13 or 14, I was listening to Danny Funderburg. I was listening to Larnell Harris, Steve Green. I was singing their stuff because my voice started changing a little bit. And what I was singing was like I had Sandy Patty tracks that I was wow. singing in her key. I mean, I just had this girl voice. I sang in the girls chorus. <laughs> I just, that's the way it was. And so when my voice started changing, I was, it was pretty late. I was 16, uh, going on 17. Um, and so I started having to listen to bass singers that I had never listened to before. I had learned for what earthly reason. I didn't learn this old house. So, um, it really was a difficult journey. And so I had a friend of mine, his name was Phil Waits, uh, still living, wonderful friend. And he had a little recorder in his basement. So what he would do is he would play these songs that featured George and Rex and Rusty. And he would let me sing along with those guys and he would record me. And then I would go home and listen and I would see what I could do different, uh, how they were doing inflections that I wasn't doing. And so when people come up and they say, man, you sound just like, I heard you and Aaron McCune actually talking about this. They'll name a hundred different people. Um, but for me, it probably is accurate because I, I sat in that basement and copied a hundred different people. So my dad always taught me cause he knew I wasn't going to be low. He knew I wasn't going to be able to do a lot of that George stuff and the JD stuff. And he just knew that. So he really pushed me towards Rex and Rusty, Brock. Um, he pushed me towards those guys. And then he wanted me to do solos more like George would do them um, or Rusty again. Those guys who could really sing those upper tones as well as they could the lower tones. So although I enjoyed JD and I probably saw JD live more than I did any other bass singer, um, what I learned was more towards those higher guys. And Dwayne Burke, you know, I talked to Dwayne Burke the other day with the Singing Americans and he was the same way. 
His lowest note was like an E flat, but the other guy sang so high that everything he sang sounded fairly low when he did it. Right. Um, and so that's really the guys that I listen to, and that's kind of who I've tried to model myself after. Was there anything you said you probably saw JD the most? And I would say he's one of the names that these guys watching this video on this channel, regardless of what kind of music they um, <clears throat> they enjoy listening to bass singers in, whether it's Southern gospel, gospel, acapella, the, the Russian Orthodox, octave, all that stuff. Probably a lot of them know the name JD. Sure. But I never personally, get, like a lot of these guys, I'm assuming, I never personally got to see him live in concert what was that experience like as a guy going to the show to to hear him okay so <laughs> this is the truth every time i dated a new girl uh i would take them to see jd and be like okay if you like this we can keep dating if you don't then i'm gonna have to <laughs> move on um but it was just it, you really can't explain it because when he would go down in those two octave slides and your seat is literally, I mean, they can't do something at Disney World to recreate that shaking of the seats and the chest. And he would take those slides down, but then he would do a really nice solo, like on God Shall Wipe Away All Tears. And he'd just bring you to tears, um, especially in those later years when he got much more emotional. His wife had passed away. He was much softer in concert. And so they really were doing some great singing. And so I, he was the first bass singer I saw live with the Masters wow. Five. And then, of course, with the Stamps, uh, I got to see him lots of times. But they would do mall concerts in the food court, and they would do a mix of country huh. and Elvis and gospel. They'd be at a Walmart parking lot. They'd be at a big auditorium. It, at church, it didn't matter where they were. They would do two and a half to three hours, no breaks. And he would do comedy, and it, it was just, and I remember one time, I would always sit in the audience, because this is how stupid I was. I would sit in the audience, and I would sing all the songs, like, not out loud, but I'd mouth them, like, really big, so they'd yeah. see me singing along. And I thought to myself, well, if they see me singing, they're going to pull me up on stage. I mean, oh, yeah. obviously. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> of course, now, that's just the dumbest thing in the world. So... I remember one time I'm singing along with JD and the Stamps and my friend Ronnie's with me and we're singing along on everything and JD stops the concert and he says, I want you to look at those two boys up there. He said, they have sung every song that we have done. They know these. Are. He actually pointed us out during the concert, gave us a ton of product afterwards, took pictures wow. with us. So he was this bigger than life superstar but he he loved the people out there and he gave yeah. them everything he had every night he was just an amazing performer and he was one of the funniest people he was the funniest person i've ever seen in concert unbelievable wow and i've 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 heard that he just he didn't care who was there he said whatever he felt like was going oh, to he did uh, not care. gonna fit he just kind of laid it out there regardless there were several churches where he sang once and that are just about to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was never invited back. <laughs> no, he was not. He would do a record pitch and I would wait for the record pitch. I mean, I waited for it because it would be 15 minutes long, okay, which that's death to any other group is a 15 minute product pitch. Yeah. He would do it and he would talk about how they had underwear with Ed Hill's face on it. I mean, he would just, <laughs> and you what? would laugh and laugh. <laughs> so anyway. That was like his comedy section was the problem. It really first. was. And one time they recorded a song that Dolly Parton had written. Yeah, that introduction never went well. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it didn't. Man, what, you know, okay, so you're talking about, you know, hearing JD in concert, and I know you know all of George's stuff. Um, but yet you focused a lot on some of Rex and Rusty and some of the other bass singers that kind of sang up higher most yeah. of the time. So what were some, what were some of the, the exercises or things that you found along your journey that helped you develop 
uh, your your voice. Okay, so every bass singer will say relax. So that's right off the bat. I did not know that literally until maybe four or five years ago. Um, I would think about the note coming up. And every time I thought about it, it, it was not going to happen. If you'll go back and listen to I Want to Know, 90% of the videos on YouTube, the first note sounds like pure garbage every single time. I mean, it's just garbage. It's horrible. Because Nick would hit the button, which gave me the note, and then I would have just have to come out of the blue and hit it, and it was right in that spot where my voice would change to the fake stuff. And so every time I think about it, all right, you've got this. And it was garbage every time. So one time we were in a huddle after I'd hit a horrible note and we're singing that little, I want to know. And Mark pulls the mic away and says, do you want me to sing it next time? (laughs) (laughs) So I was overthinking everything. So it really is just relax. I had to learn that right off the bat. The people out there don't know what note you're hitting. They don't know if it's a C or a G. They just know if it sounds good or not. So hit a note that's going to sound good. Daddy taught me, don't let them know what your lowest note is. Mm. If you never hit the note below your lowest, your lowest, they'll never know what your lowest is. Mm. And I've had people come up to me at the table and say, my goodness, how low can you go? I'm hitting like a, a B on a good night. And they're asking me like I'm hitting G's and F. So if you never let them know what that lowest note is, you know, you're going to be in good shape. But as far as exercises, I do more exercises in the upper tone, um, trying to get all of that opened up. So I do a lot of the normal stuff, you know, the all that kind of stuff to wake up the upper tones. But then I'll walk around this house all the time and I'm saying, mama, mama. And Linnell's just like, "Ugh, would you please stop saying mama over and over? Um, And I'm saying green. Uh, I'm I'm doing that all the time. I mean, it's pretty constant that I'm trying to keep the low tones, but all my exercises are up in those upper tones. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so. Early on, you're developing that. You're going, doing the exercises, listening to all the other guys. Was there a point in your journey where the low notes developed better for you um, than, than before? Or was there something you did specifically that was like, I can attribute me singing two notes lower to this? Was there anything like that for you on your journey? Yes, medication. <laughs> it really helps me relax. <laughs> um, there you honestly, have it. <laughs> I would have to say um, the Cathedral Family Reunion and the Second Half Quartet, because with that setup, there was always. Now, this is going to sound real generic, but it, it really is the truth. There was always a sound man. And I always had exactly what I needed in the monitors. And I had four other professionals standing there. I have all of the support I need to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got Rob Dixon back there. You've got Blake Bennett back there. You've got all these great sound guys back there. You've got the guys behind you, you know, cheering you on. And so really that helped to kind of make me feel more comfortable but then joining the guardians now you're talking about a full-time sound man who knows exactly what you need when you need it you're talking about unbelievable encouragers like dean and all those guys and then you've got an arranger like john who knows exactly what you can do vocally he doesn't ask you to do more or less um and then you're just you're so comfortable up there because Everything is perfect. I mean, every night, 
everything is exactly what I need and getting ears. Although there are those, you know, those guys from 20, 30 years ago, they do not like the ears. And I completely understand why um, having the ears really helped uh, because I, I can't push forward like you and Paul and Tim and Jeff. I do not have those tones. I couldn't hear myself in the monitors. I would struggle every night and I would push and push. And then when I got those ears, I'm telling you, it really did help. Um, yeah. And I can still blend with the guys. I'm still paying attention. Um, but man, does it make it easy to sing with those ears? <laughs> yeah, it really does. Because then you're able to solo out exactly. I mean, you're vocal. And it's when you go for those low notes, and I, I would imagine this, this would just be my guess that guys like JD and George, that they had their microphone hotter than everybody else's in that floor wedge. Oh, yeah. So that so that when they went for those low notes, they could hear what was going on. They could hear if they were on pitch. They could hear if they hit it. You know, they would be able yeah. to know. Um, fast forward to today. Some of the groups, you know, you don't you can't step up as the bass singer in the group if you don't own the group and say, I want to be louder than everybody else. So now we have the great technology with the ear monitors that we can solo it out and say, OK, I need everything else out or mm -hmm. half of or whatever. And I just need to be able to hear when I hit that low note uh, or when I sing down in that register that I'm on pitch. Yeah, that I'm actually hitting the note. And, and I, um, you know, I, I've tried my best, and I think the guys would attest to this, to not get lazy with it, because that can be what you do. You can just get lazy, and it's right there in your ear, and you're no longer concerned about blending, because when I was with the Dixie Echoes, I shared a mic. I mean, I literally yeah. had to share the mic with Scoot and blend myself in with just one monitor sitting in front of me. Yeah. Um, and then with Mark... You know, he likes tones to be, you know, right there at the edge, which makes it easier to sing, but it still makes it very difficult to hear yourself, you know, in the monitors. Yeah. With guys with sound men that I could just say, hey, I've got my own monitor, so can you give me this? Boy, that changed everything. And then when I was able to put the ears in, again, it just took it to a new level. Mark said that George... He would have the occasional bad night, but it really did depend on the monitors. Um, if they were just like he needed them to be, you know, then he could sing easy and he could bellow out those unbelievable tones that he had. Wow. So in the How Not To video, we talked about uh, gallons of milk and ice cream and all that. Now, is there anything legit that you try to stay away from before you sing or... Is there a drink, uh, food items that you want to eat or drink before you sing that do help you? The best singing I've done, first off, depends on my weight. Uh, I'm, I'm much bigger now than I was when I was traveling a few months ago, you know, quarantine. <laughs> um, but if I'm around 220, 225, I, I feel like I'm singing better. Um, sometimes I've been up to 265, sometimes I've been down to 215, but that 220, 225 range, I feel good. When I'm eating vegan, um, I have zero problem singing. Um, wow. If I switch off the vegan diet or the lifestyle, then I can tell I have some acid reflux problems. I have some things I have to deal with. Um, so I try to do vegan as much as I can. Um, because it just really does help clear all the acid out and I feel much clearer and much better. I always drink a gallon of water every day. That doesn't change. So no matter what, one gallon of water, I, I, I buy gallon jugs. I've got one right down there. Um, and when I'm finished with my gallon at around eight o'clock at night, then I'm done. So, so, so do you have a catheter hooked up to you for the day? <laughs> I mean, it's just, just clear it all out for you, so, because that's a lot of water, man. That is a lot of water. During the concert, it gets rough there around the <laughs> product pitch time. I'm, I bet. I'm, I'm hurting it up. Um, <laughs> so there are things like that, and then like the licorice tea. I drink licorice tea. That helps with the acid reflux. Um, I, I drink lukewarm everything. There's nothing I drink with ice. 
uh, everything is lukewarm. Um, that helps to keep from freezing everything up and it just keeps mm. everything nice and open. Um, I do things like that. Um, and if I'm really struggling, oh boy, am I going to get in trouble for this? Going back to JD, um, I'll do whiskey, honey, and lemon juice. That was my grandmother wouldn't even spell the word beer or wine or any type of liquor. But if you got sick, honey, <laughs> whiskey, honey, and lemon juice, because it was medicinal, just like the New Testament says. <laughs> um, so I'll do that. I mean, I'll do whatever I need to do, you know, to yeah. make sure that I'm comfortable and, and ready to go. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, where can these guys that are watching this connect with you on social and the group you sing with? They can't. I really don't need any more friends. Perfect. So, <laughs> what, so but now, you can connect with the Guardians. Hey, there you go. Yeah, go to guardiansquartet.com, YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. Yeah. What What one song, if they've not heard you for some reason, if they've not heard you sing, what song would you point them to on YouTube to get a good idea of how you sing? Um, probably I would I would pick two. I would do a slow one, like How Big Is God? Um, that kind of takes the range up and down. And then maybe um, God Fights On My Side, something upbeat. Because um, you really do have to prepare yourself differently for a ballad than you do uh, a fast song and medium tempos and... That's something I really had to work on as well with my breathing um, to make yeah. sure that all of my breathing was in place for those really fast songs. And then those power ballads, it's completely different. Yeah, that's right. Well, guys, go check it out. Pat Barker sings with the Guardians Quartet and check out those songs he just mentioned. You can find them just by typing in the names that he mentioned and then his name and you'll find it out there, guys. Go check him out. Thanks, Pat, for your time today, man. Thank you, Matthew. Have a good one. All right. You too.